The Tesla Powerwall 2. What is it? How does it work? And importantly, how long would it take to pay off? Now, normally after the intro sequence, I would do a slow-mo B-roll of the things that I review, but today, I'm not going to do that because, well, the Powerwall 2 is essentially only two things. This and that. The actual battery itself is a 112 kilogram behemoth sitting over a meter tall and well in our case mounted to the wall. And you've also got a smaller backup gateway box which provides energy management, metering, monitoring and more. So I'll let you soak in these views for a second whilst I walk to another part of the house because the exciting thing about home batteries isn't the devices themselves, rather what you can do with them. Let me explain over a coffee. And by the way, how are you? You good? Want a coffee? Normally a Powerwall 2 costs about $11,000 plus an additional three to $4,000 for installation and certification. My journey with the Powerwall 2 started in May last year when the Victorian government announced that my suburb was one of the few who could apply for a subsidy to install one of these things. But there are some eligibility requirements such as, well, you can't have already accessed the solar grant for your current house. You can't have a combined household income of like more than $180,000. Your household value can't be more than $3 million. And importantly, you must have a five kilowatt inverter or larger. So for us, we used our solar grant at our last house and installed in the early 2000s, a massive, <laughs> massive 1.5 kilowatt system. And those days of the amazing 66 cents feed-in tariff rate. Yeah, those were the days, right? Well, when we moved here, we couldn't get another grant, so we paid almost $8,000 for a four and a half kilowatt solar system and well, sadly missed that massive feed-in rate. But hey, 10 cents per kilowatt hour, it's better than nothing, right? So fast forward five years and well, this scheme just and only just made sense for us. You see, the total price of our power would have been $15,000. And at that price, the repay would have taken like 15 years plus. For something that only has a 10 year warranty and a guarantee of 70% operating efficiency at year 10, the economics and well, likelihood of something that would not be paying for itself wasn't worth the investment. Uh, because we were lucky enough to get the battery grant of $4,838, it brought the total package down to just a bit over $10,000. For some, this might be too high, but hang around because at the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you a tool which will help you understand as to whether or not this is a worthwhile investment for you. But for us, this $10,000 buy-in was both a rational and well, emotional decision, which we did one, to do our bit for the environment, but also two, to significantly reduce our electricity bills. How much? Well, more on that soon too. Right, the install. Back in late August, we got about two weeks notice about the installation date uh, by an installer certified by Tesla. Yeah, you heard right. Tesla makes them and supports them, but doesn't install them. Go figure. All in all, a very easy process. They came in early September and spent about, well, three quarters of a day installing it and getting up and running. That is, it was sucking in the sun rays from the roof, storing it in the battery. And when it was full, it was sent electricity to the grid. And later that night, we used that store power from the Powerwall 2 in the house to do more things like this. Or this. For those familiar with solar installs, you might know that like a third party auditor or official looking person will come out and inspect the install and give it the okay to feed electricity to the grid. But with our power wall, this rubber staff didn't occur for like a month and that was okay because our battery can't feed electricity to the grid. Why is that? Well, it's part, well, system design with the hardware, but also a regulatory thing. Let me explain. In South Australia, where they already have a few suburbs with like more than 1,100 homes connected to a virtual grid, that's like lots of power walls. The grid operator can demand energy from those batteries to the actual grid itself. And the reason? Well, they've got an extra little bit of hardware in there. Pretty cool, huh? But for us, we can't do that, which is fine because this 13.5 kilowatt hour battery can't cover our household energy requirements on more most days. 
Rather, we use about 14.5 to 16.5 kilowatt hours of energy per day. Now, let me know, let me know below how much you use. For us, a family of six, that's actually on the low side. But that's only due to the fact that I have like LED lights everywhere, insulation in our roof, and a household train to turn things off when they're not in use. And one of the side effects of having a Powerwall 2 is that you'll randomly open the app no matter where you are in the world and you'll be seeing like how much energy you're actually capturing, maybe how much energy you're using, or just curious how that battery is going along. It certainly has changed my thinking around how we use power in our home and how to better use solar energy and how much power that we need to keep in reserve should a blackout occur. Story time. Soon after we got it, I went to bed one night admiring the app and seeing the uh, energy being drained. I think it was like about 30%. So it was heading towards my threshold of 15%, which is to say it actually keeps that in reserve, or I decide where the reserve is, for emergency situations. So after a pleasant night's sleep, I woke up the next morning, opened the app, and like the battery was full. I'm like, what the? How did that happen? What had happened was that the Powerwall 2 with that little box, the gateway thing, it monitors local weather and if a storm is anticipated and you have Stormwatch feature turned on, it will fill up with electricity from the grid just in case you get a blackout. Amazing stuff. And app settings, monitoring and more is done via Wi-Fi to this device. So you do feel pretty smug that when the street power goes out and what your lights, TV, heating, cooling, Whatever is actually drawing electricity is still on. It's very liberating to say the least. But because you are so energy conscious, you do start thinking, well, how long will the battery last if we keep pulling this much energy? Well, let's take a look, shall we? All right, so right now we've got about two, uh, three TVs running. Uh, we've got the big fan upstairs running, as well as 10 lights, Google Wi-Fi and four different points, two different computers, and yeah, that's about 1.2 kilowatts of power being drawn. Okay, so if the battery was completely full, that would mean it would last about 10 to 11 hours. If you want to extend that, you could. You just simply go turn things off, and that number will quickly expand out to, well, you can make it last 24 hours if you really try. I should note that the Powerwall 2 can deliver up to five kilowatts of power to a home. That's like 5,000 watts. So if you demand more from it, all it will do is, well, let's pretend your electricity is back on now, okay? It will then mix in power from the grid as well as power from the battery itself. And side note, you potentially can have a Tesla Powerwall 2 run as an off-grid solution, but in doing so is tricky in Australia right now because, well, for regulatory reasons. But keep an eye on that. So let's go over the system. Here's the actual Tesla battery, and well, it's got this gorgeous green LED strip, which in our install is sadly hidden from view. It pulses up or down depending on energy flow. Next is the gateway, and there, there's some conduit stuff setting power this way and that between the fuse box, solar panels, home, and well, the grid. It all works without you needing to do anything, and this is one of the features that I love about it. It just works day in, day out, and has kept our lights on about, well, once or twice per month when like there's been a little blackout in the area. It's a quiet little champion. You can store up to 10 of these in a home and either put them next to each other, creating one massive 135 kilowatt hour battery system, or stack them three deep like cards. If we had an electric car, we would definitely need more of them. For instance, if we had a Tesla Model S with its 100 kilowatt hour battery, if it came home with absolutely zero left in the battery, you would need seven and a half of these to get it back to 100%. Now, the battery has a built-in fan and is quite happy being inside a garage like ours or even outside on an external wall of your home because it's IP rated to 56 or 67 for the wiring and battery units respectively. And it can handle conditions from very hot, like 50 degrees Celsius, down to minus 20. Yes, minus 20. So after five months of ownership, let me share some of my learnings with you. First thing, I wish we had a larger solar array. On days when it's cloudy, the power wall too doesn't fill up, meaning that we have to use power from the grid. 
Now, when I say that my show is 100% renewably powered, it certainly is because, well, if the energy we're using hasn't come from the solar directly, from the battery directly, a mix of the two, we then get a bit of a top up from our electricity company, which is using renewable power. Now, if you haven't actually checked out renewable power in the last 10 years, do so because you know what? Prices in the last decade have come down significantly. So do that, please. Second, get yourself a stepped electricity plan. Remembering that the Powerwall 2 can charge from the grid. All right, so what you do is, using the app, you tell it when the cheaper electricity time is, and then it will automatically pull power from the grid and fill itself up to 100% so that you use it later when the peak pricing is in effect. And now, it's probably a good time to know that you don't actually need to have your Powerwall 2 connected to solar. No, you can actually connect it to the grid or other forms, which, well, to be honest, I'm not very familiar with. So you want to know more, check out the link below and Tesla can actually help you out in this respect. Next up, our electricity bills used to be about $130 a month and well now they're only $30 to $40. Yes, we're saving about $100 per month. See this? That's our solar generation to the grid and our power consumed from the grid. Notice how it's contracted a lot since September last year? That's because we now use all of our own solar power only when we need a little top up from the grid. So I anticipate in winter that these savings won't be as high, but when I did my sums on how long it would take to repay this $10,000 investment, it turned out it would only be seven to eight years. And after that point, it's money in the bank. Heck, it might even be quicker if our electricity prices keep going up like they have since 2008. Our politicians, they keep promising to do something about this. But the reality is, is that as more renewables come online and they will push electricity prices down in the marketplace, the reality is, is that the retail prices will actually continue to go up. It's diabolical and I don't foresee a change in this space anytime soon. Now, I promised you a tool to help you calculate how long it would take for you to get a house battery and have it repaid. Now, this online tool is actually free and it's like a Google Sheet and there's also a downloadable Excel version of it too. Now, to better control for things like the amount of sun that your solar panels are going to be getting, what your average use is per day, and all those other things, that's near on impossible. So, what I need you to do is think about what the average situation for you is going to be and yeah, give it a try. It's a bit of a rough guess and might not be very accurate, who knows. But I do want to hear from you. Give it a, give it a hot shot and uh, yeah, let me know how long will it take for your battery to be repaid. Next, people ask me, can you go off grid? And for that, well, right now, nah. We'd need at least two, if not actually three of these for days when the sun doesn't shine. As I mentioned earlier, we use about two kilowatts of imported renewable power from the grid every day. That costs us about 25, sorry, 50 cents of, of electricity. But if we had more solar panels and a larger battery, we wouldn't need to do this at all. <music> Lastly, check out how you're actually using energy in your home. I learned that standby power in our house was about 500 watts. So what does any good parent do? Yeah, you go around disconnecting stuff. That said, I thankfully have stopped looking at this app every other hour of the day and now only glance at it once or twice, maybe. And I guess it's this last point, which is like a game changer, not only for us with a battery, but for anyone. You think differently about your power consumption. If it's the middle of the day and your battery is full, don't send your precious solar power to the grid. No, that only gets you like 10 or 12 cents per kilowatt hour, unless you're still on that awesome old rate. No, use that power, put a load of washing on, cool your house down, put the aircon on, recharge your battery operated devices. But keep an eye on your consumption and make sure it doesn't surpass what your solar is generating. You don't need like a Tesla Powerwall 2 and a fancy app, nah. Just get yourself a cheap home monitoring kit and use that. Because collecting your solar power, storing in a battery for use later on, not only lowers your carbon footprint, but it also means that you lower your bills and well, you keep your lights on. Oh. You see what I did?
See what I did? I filmed this whole segment at night using electricity from our solar panels stored in the Powerwall 2 and made the whole video on renewable power. Turns out that solar does kind of work at night.